Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have finished doing almost all the problems from this book. If there is any math problem at all that gives you trouble and if you, that gives you difficulty and if you wish to watch the solution to it, you will find the solutions to almost all the problems from this book from day number 251 through 400, from 251 through 400. The book, the second edition here, happens to contain the exact same problem in most cases and appearing on exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are finished doing all the problems from this book. In the event that you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find all the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. 1 through 250. The original solutions tend to be a little, tend to be a little lengthier. They tend to be a little bit more in depth. Right now, we are in process of solving some quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions, as you know, are a very important part of the exam. They are a big chunk of the exam. They have not gone away. Unfortunately for us, the newer books do not provide us with sufficient practice problems. For that reason, we began a new series from day number 401. We began solving quantitative comparison questions out of this book here, the 10th edition of the general GRE. Right now, we are on page number 375. Please turn to it. Page number 375, problem number 5. Problem number 5. Problem number 5 when it appeared in the exam. 79% of the people had no trouble with it, 4 fifths of the people got it right, it's a very straightforward problem. Here is what it says. It says, Mrs. Rogers bought an electric range, she bought an electric range on installment plan. The cash price of the range, the cash price of the range was $400. The amount she paid, the amount she paid was $120 down payment and she made a 12 monthly payments of $28 each. She made a 12 payments of $28 each every month. What we are being asked to compare is the excess amount, the amount she paid, the amount she paid for the range in excess of the cash price. The amount she paid, how much more does she pay compared to what the cash price was versus 56. I'll give you 5 seconds to pause and unpause the video, do it yourself and then we'll do it together. Well, here's what's going on. We know she paid $120 down and then we are told that she made a 12 payment. She made 12 payments of $28. 12 payments of $28. Don't waste your time doing it all out before you go gung-ho, before you go bonkers. Take a, take a second to take a look at it. These numbers are given for a reason. They, these numbers do not just fall from the sky. They are chosen uh, with a lot of care. 12 times 28 can be written as 10 times 28 10 times 28 plus 2 times 28. Don't you agree? 10 times 28, 10 times 28 is 280. 280 plus 120, 280 plus 120, how much do you suppose that is going to be? 280 plus 120 is 400. That's the cash price. So amount that she paid in excess is this amount right here. 2 times 28 is exactly the same as 56. The answer is C. The answer is C. Number two, or number five, number six. Number six. Number six is a geometry problem. Seventy percent of the people had no trouble with it. Here's what we're being asked to compare: column A, length of Code PQ versus column B, we're being asked to compare length of code, length of code XY. And here's the picture. I'm going to draw the picture on the bottom here. Uh, We are given a circle here, I lost it. 
Here's the center. Here's our P2Q. I'm showing you the picture exactly the way it appeared in the exam. And we are told that this makes a 90 degree. And we are told that this distance from here to here is 5.9. And here's the other one. This is x, x to y, and this distance from here to here, this is also a right angle, is 5.8. That's it. And we're being asked to compare, we're being asked to compare the length of the chord PQ versus the length of the chord XY. I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself. Here we go. What we need to understand here, what we need to understand here is that when we're dealing with circles, when we're dealing with circles, chord, chord gets longer, chord gets longer as it gets, as it gets closer to the center. If you draw a circle here, here is the center, there is one chord right here. As you can see, this chord is quite far from the center. As I bring that chord closer and closer, it's, it's going to get longer. This chord, the next chord here, is longer than that one. Chord number, chord number two is longer than chord number one because it's getting closer to the center. As I make it even closer, it gets longer yet. Chord number three is longer than chord two. As we get closer yet, it becomes even longer. And eventually, eventually, if you were to draw chord on chord chord, that happens to go to the center because it's such a special chord because it's such a special chord it's special because it happens to go to the center because it's such a special chord we give it a special name we no longer call it chord it is called now the diameter a diameter is a chord except it happens to go to the center and because it goes to the center so instead of calling it chord it's a unique kind of chord we're going to call it diameter but as you can see, that's the longest one. The longest chord, chord and chord chord, you're going to find is when it goes through the center. But as you can see, as we get closer and closer to the center, the chords get longer. Which one here is the closer to the center? Well, this PQ or XY? Well, obviously XY is closer because XY, we are told, is only 5.8 units from the center, whereas this one is 5.9. This is 5.8. XY is closer to the center because because x chord xy is closer to the center, the length of xy is going to be more than the length of pq. That's it. The answer is b. The answer is b. Because xy, the chord xy, is closer to the center. It's only 5.8 units away from the center. That one is 5.9 units from the center. Number seven. Number seven. Question number seven, when it appeared in the exam, 66% of people had no trouble with it, two-thirds of the people got it right. Here's what we are told. We have a quantity n, we are told, is a positive quantity, it's more than zero. We are told that n over x equals to 428. And we are also told that, and we are told that n over y equals 107. I need the room, obviously, we're going to have to erase all of this thing. But always remember the chord, chord, any chord is going to get longer as it gets closer and closer to the center. As it gets closer to the center, as it gets closer and closer to the center. Or if you like, it gets shorter as, as it goes farther and farther away from the center. Here's what we're being asked to compare. In column A, in column A we have X and in column Y, in column B we have Y. X versus Y. Again, as always, I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself. Here we go. We are being asked to compare X and Y. Prudent thing for us would be to actually solve these two equations here for X and Y. So that we can compare them, shall we? 
Let's do that. If we solve this equation, if we solve this equation for x, we find that this equation implies that x must equal n over n over 428. N over 428. That's our x. Similarly, y. Y, if we solve for it, it will be it will be y is equals to n over 107. N over 107. As you can see, the numerator is the same. The numerator in both cases is the same. This same quantity n is being chopped up into 428 parts. This exact same quantity is being chopped up into 107 parts. And because it is chopped up into fewer parts, of course, each of the parts is going to be bigger than that part. The answer is b. The answer is b. Number eight. Question number eight. Question number eight, when it appeared in the exam, 72 percent, we had no trouble with it. It's a geometry question. We have given two parallel lines, L1 and L2. We are told that L1 is parallel to L2. You cannot simply, had, had we been not given this information, had we been not given this information, we cannot simply look at the bloody thing and say L1 is parallel to L2 just because it looks like it. No, 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 no. The pictures are not drawn to scale as I remind you every time we do a geometry questions. Back in the good old days, many, 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 many moons ago when you took the SAT, on the SAT all the pictures are drawn to scale unless they tell you that it is not drawn to scale. In the GRE, exact opposite is true. All the pictures are not drawn to scale unless in a rare instance when they tell you that this particular, this bloody thing is drawn to scale. There will be caption underneath it which will clearly tell you that it's drawn to scale. Otherwise, you have to assume that they're not drawn to scale. So if they're not drawn to scale, how can I tell the L, L1 is parallel to L2? I can't just go by the looks. We can't just go by the looks, as I always remind you. It ain't a, it ain't a beauty contest. We can't go by the looks. Do you understand? GRE is ain't a beauty contest. How do we know L1 is parallel to L2? Because they tell us so. They tell us L1 is parallel to L2. They clearly tell us at the, at, at the bottom of the picture. And then we are told, but we have on the line going like this, we are told that this is 180 minus r degree, 180 minus r degree, we are told that this is s degree, and we are told that this is r degree. What we are being asked to compare, what we are being asked to compare, in column A we have s, and in column B we have 60. Again, do it yourself, do it yourself and see what you can do. We are being asked to compare s versus 60. I will give you 5 seconds to pause and unpause the video. So here we go. Because of the fact that we are told that L1 is parallel to L2, L1 is parallel to L2, which means S has to equal this quantity. This angle has to equal that angle. When we have two parallel lines, this angle has to equal that angle. And therefore S, S equals 180 minus R, 180 minus R, 180 minus R. What can we do with it actually? The answer to that question, what can we do with it? The answer to that question would be nothing at all. This bloody thing that uh, I thought I thought we were going someplace with it. And I just realized that we hit a brick wall just now. That's it. There's nothing we can do about it. We know nothing about they tell us nothing at all about this angle. This angle is just R. It's just we are being asked to compare instead of, instead of S versus 60, now we're comparing 180 versus 60. Since we do 180 minus r versus 60, since we know nothing at all about r, we cannot do anything. If r happens to be, if r happens to be 120, if the r happens to be 120, then in that case the answer would be c. If if r is 120, the answer would be c. If r happens to be, if r happens to be something other than 120, if r happens to be something other than 120, the answer is not going to be c, and therefore the answer is d. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.